When the misfits exploded onto the late 1970s punk scene, it was often Glenn Danzig's sinister lyrics and vocals that grabbed the attention. But the band's iconic horror punk sound could not have emerged without Jerry only. Anchoring the rhythm section while a revolving door of guitarists came and went, Jerry only was the dependable musical core of the misfits through all their lineup changes. His self-taught bass skills, honed on albums by Black Sabbath, Led Zeppelin and others, made him the perfect punk foil to Glenn Danzig's experimental visions. When Jerry and Glenn began assembling musicians in 1977 for what would become the Misfits, it was clear only Jerry had the versatility to lock into Glenn's unconventional songs. Through his bass playing and backups, Jerry only helped cement the band's emerging horror punk sound during their early years grinding away in North Jersey. While the Misfits built an intensely dedicated cult fan base in those early years, mainstream success eluded them, leading to instability in the lineup and financial struggles. After years grinding away in obscurity, conflicts emerged that would ultimately end Glenn and Jerry's explosive collaboration. Following the Misfits' initial run it appeared the band might fade away, but Jerry only had other plans. He set to work preserving the Misfits' legacy and song rights during the 1990s, while the iconography and influence of the band continued growing. Though it would take years before the tumultuous relationships with ex-members could heal, Jerry only remained determined to resurrect the horror punk sound he helped create as a founding member of the Misfits. The story of the band was far from over. Jerry only was born as Gerald Kayafa on September 23, 1959, in Lodi, New Jersey, a small suburban town near the more urban areas of Jersey City. Jerry was raised alongside his brother Doyle in a working-class Italian-American family. Their father worked various blue-collar jobs while their mother was a homemaker. As a young teen in the early 1970s, Jerry became enthralled by the theatrical horror films of actors like Vincent Price and Christopher Lee. This fascination with the creepy aesthetic would stick with Kayafa and eventually influence the imagery of the misfits years later. However, it was music that truly captivated a young Jerry only. He received his first bass guitar at 14 years old as a Christmas gift and took to it instantly. While self-taught, Jerry developed his aggressive rhythmic style by attempting to play along to albums by hard rock bands like Jimi Hendrix, Led Zeppelin, and most pivotally, Black Sabbath. The heavy metal and proto-punk sounds resonated with Jerry, and he practiced fervently after school in the Kayafa family basement. Several high school friends, including future collaborator Glenn Danzig, made up Jerry's social circle, and they would attend local concerts together soaking up the period's groundbreaking punk acts like the Ramones. These formative musical experiences planted the seeds that bloomed into Jerry's horror punk innovations years later. The beginnings of the Misfits can be traced to 1977 when Jerry Only and Glenn Danzig, friends from their Lodi NJ high school days, decided to form a band. United by a love of punk rock and the dark aesthetics of old horror and sci-fi films, they set out to create something genre-bending that would shock and captivate audiences. After cycling through a few early drummers and guitarists without success, they brought in Dr. Chud on drums and began playing tiny venues in and around North Jersey. Their loud, fast, and often melody-driven songs covered unusual lyrical themes like B-movie monsters and aliens. After self-releasing a single Cough Cool themselves, they began gaining a small following for their DIY ethic and outrageous horror-inspired live shows. Audiences didn't know quite what to make of Danzig crooning about zombies while only, and whatever guitarist they had at the time, blasted out unrelenting punk rock rhythms. The band continued struggling with stabilizing a lineup around only, Danzig, and Dr. Chud. Nearly ten different guitarists filtered briefly through the Misfits until Only's brother Doyle joined up to bring some stability. This allowed the band to release several independent EPs like Bullet, Horror Business, and Night of the Living Dead that showcased their trademark sound coming together through Only's booming bass chords and Doyle's guitar shrieks. Behind the horror movie bravado and aggressive stage persona, Jerry Only endured his share of difficulties and tragedy over the decades. He married at a young age in 1980 to a woman named Sandra, shortly after the misfits began gaining notoriety. However, the relationship quickly deteriorated due to Only's constant touring and devotion to the band lifestyle. Only's struggles with substance abuse throughout the Misfits' career also led to ups and downs personally. During particularly chaotic periods in the late 1980s, 
Only's dedication to the band resulted in limited time with his family. He had three children by the early 90s, but found maintaining his family life challenging while attempting to manage the volatile Misfits world. In 1979, the Misfits embarked on their journey to record their debut album, Static Age. Fueled by their distinctive blend of horror-themed lyrics and catchy punk melodies, the band entered the studio with high expectations. Led by Glenn Danzig's powerful vocals and Jerry Only's driving bass lines, Static Age aimed to capture the raw energy of the Misfits' live performances. However, a series of challenges, including label disputes and financial constraints, led to the album's shelving. Despite the setbacks, the material recorded during the Static Age of sessions became legendary among Misfits fans. It became the basis for both the Bullet and Horror Business EPs, which featured some of the band's most iconic songs. The album was eventually released in 1996, unveiling a collection of tracks that showcased the band's early experimentation and set the stage for their future endeavors. Though it may have been a failed debut at the time, Static Age now stands as a testament to the Misfits' resilience and their enduring impact on the punk rock genre. In 1982, the Misfits unleashed their debut studio album, Walk Among Us, Upon the World. This landmark record not only marked their formal entrance into the studio, but also showcased the band's evolving sound, building upon the groundwork laid during the Static Age recording sessions, featuring tracks like 20 Eyes, Night of the Living Dead, and Astro Zombies. Walk Among Us offered a relentless onslaught of fast-paced punk anthems. Each track, infused with Glenn Danzig's powerful vocals and Jerry Only's thunderous bass lines, carried forward the momentum of their earlier recordings while introducing a refined and intensified version of their signature horror punk style. The album quickly became a favorite among punk rock fans, drawn to its dark lyrical themes and catchy choruses. Songs like Skulls and I, Turn It Into a Martian exemplify the Misfits' trademark, blend of horror and humor, creating a unique and captivating listening experience. Walk Among Us not only solidified their status as icons of the punk rock genre, but also showcased their growing influence on the scene. Punk luminaries like Henry Rollins, frontman of Black Flag, counted themselves among the album's avid listeners. The raw energy and unapologetic attitude of Walk Among Us resonated deeply with Rollins and others, further cementing the Misfits' influence on the punk rock landscape. With Walk Among Us, the Misfits not only cemented their status as pioneers of the horror punk genre, but also left an indelible mark on the music world. The album continues to resonate with fans, a testament to the Misfits' enduring legacy and their pivotal role in shaping the punk rock landscape. In the wake of their breakout album, Walk Among Us, the Misfits embarked on a tour that would solidify their status as one of punk rock's most electrifying live acts. The Walk Among Us tour, which kicked off in 1982, took the band across the United States, bringing their unique blend of horror punk to audiences hungry for something new and exciting. The tour was a crucial moment for Jerry Only, providing him with the opportunity to connect with fans on a national level and introduce their music to new audiences. From small clubs to larger venues, the Misfits' high-energy performances and theatrical stage presence captivated audiences wherever they went, earning them a devoted following along the way. With a set list packed with fan favorites from Walk Among Us, including 20 Eyes, Astro Zombies, and Skulls, the Misfits delivered night after night of adrenaline-fueled performances that left audiences craving more. The tour was a testament to the band's growing influence and their ability to captivate audiences with their unique brand of horror punk. In 1983, the Misfits unleashed their third studio album, Earth AD, upon the world, marking a significant departure from their earlier sound. With its ferocious pace and aggressive guitar riffs, Earth AD, pushed the boundaries of the Misfits' music, embracing a more hardcore punk influence and inventing the stereotypical thrash metal sound. While best known as the Misfits' bassist and backing vocalist, Only's influence extends behind the scenes as well. He helped establish the Fiend Club in the 1980s, an early iteration of a fan club community that fostered deeper connections with diehard Misfits followers through exclusive merchandise, a newsletter, and access to secret shows. This concept would go on to be adopted by many bands in the coming decades. Additionally, Only's business-minded determination helped secure important merchandising and licensing deals in the 1990s and 2000s, well before the wider mainstreaming of punk rock iconography we see today. Deals for Misfits t-shirts in malls like Hot Topic 
ultimately introduces the band's horror imagery to whole new generations. Some longtime Misfits fans also overlook Jerry's collaborations with bands like Motorcycle Stunt Troop, the Metal Militia for theme songs and merchandise designs. These outside projects and partnerships kept money coming in during the Misfits' inactive years and reinforced Jerry's creative influence beyond just the band. After years of grinding away in obscurity, the original Misfits finally called it quits in 1983 as internal conflicts came to a head. While rising tensions with Glenn Danzig were a core issue, the band simply could not find financial stability or mainstream recognition. Briefly in 1985, Jerry and his brother Doyle attempted to form a new band called Christ the Conqueror, playing heavy metal music. However, contract disputes tied to the Misfits' name derailed the band quickly. This pattern would frustrate the brothers' attempts at new projects for years to come. Jerry's main creative outlet in the late 80s post-Misfits era became centered around a hard rock band called Gorgeous Frankenstein that he formed with friends. Blending horror imagery with guitar-driven classic metal and a bit of punk aggression, Gorgeous Frankenstein allowed Jerry to continue honing his songwriting craft throughout the late 1980s into the 90s. Jerry only believed wholeheartedly in the influence of those early Misfits songs and ideas. He set forth on a legal battle to attain rights for the extensive back catalog of unreleased Misfits recordings from the Danzig era. These songs remained untapped gold as far as Only was concerned. Against the odds, Only won that lengthy court fight in the late 1990s and set forth assembling new lineups and releasing archived albums. While public reception varied greatly, Only single-mindedly kept the Misfits spirit alive by any means throughout the 1990s and early 2000s. While fame and commercial recognition largely eluded the Misfits in their initial 1977-1983 run, the band is now regarded as hugely impactful on punk, metal, and alternative rock music. Their horror movie meets punk attitude spawned an entire sub-genre dubbed horror punk. It's nearly impossible to find a hard rock band today without some family resemblance to the Misfits' sound and aesthetic. The look and style innovated by Jerry and Glenn so long ago can be seen in hugely popular acts like My Chemical Romance, AFI, and countless others. Those oddly melodic punk anthems have become cultural touchstones, and the anchor throughout the years has been Jerry only. His timeless bass guitar and vocal style have endured across decades and outside projects. When only resurrected the Misfits in the 90s and Olins, it brought attention from major labels and festival appearances, proving the draw of his contributions as a founding member. Jerry's legal victories maintaining access to the classic Misfits catalog also guaranteed that new fans continue discovering the band despite so many inactive years. The frequent use of those songs in film, TV, and video game projects further cemented the cultural status of what only helped build. While ratios fluctuate on what current artists are directly inspired by Danzig's songwriting versus the musical foundations laid by only, there is no questioning the overall legacy and influence on modern rock. Jerry Only's sheer determination over 40-plus years has kept that punk horror spirit alive and shaping new creative minds. After helping pioneer a one-of-a-kind punk rock style that blended B-horror imagery with aggression and melody, Jerry Only has devoted his life to ensuring the Misfits' influence lives on. His journey keeping the band's spirit intact through eras of instability is truly remarkable. As we've explored, while Glenn Danzig conjured the dark lyrical identity, it was Jerry's brooding bass guitar and vocals that musically embodied that horror punk feeling. And Only's persistence and legal victories enabled new generations of outsider musicians and fans to discover those timeless songs decade after decade. The improbable longevity and mainstreaming of the Misfits' iconography can be credited to Jerry Only's relentless drive. Few bands inactive for so long retain such an immense cultural footprint without key members. Jerry's sheer willpower made it so. If you enjoyed this glimpse into Jerry's life and the Misfits story, dig deeper into their discography of classics like Hybrid Moments, London Dungeon, and Where Eagles Dare. Let the ghostly punk atmospheres and tales of Saifi and horror inspire your own creative spirit. Jerry surly forget his own path. May you be so bold in your self-expression.